welcome back. We're going to start a new episode where we're going to paint some tractor parts. As you can see, it's a John Deere 3640. Uh, some parts are plastic and some part of our normal steel. Um, he bought new fenders and they actually painted the fenders. But if you look closer here, you will see that I didn't even remove the old rust. And they only laid down very, very, very thin layer of crap paint. So they need to be repainted as well. And on the hood here, you will see that the paint is very, very faded. Of course, you can go through it and polish it up. That's possible. But if you look here, you will see that it started to peel off. Uh, if we go over here, we have the roof as well, and as you can see in this end, there is not much paint left, it's almost just peeled off. They have painted this roof kind of white, I don't know why, and it's crap. And this is plastic as well, so uh, this tutorial or sh episodes here will show you how to prepare, get ready and paint both plastic and metal part. Uh, it will also include some preparation of the metal itself to fix up dents like this one here. So what do we need to start this up? Uh, to, in the beginning I will be using this grinder with a grinding disc uh, like 120 I think and I'm using my normal Orbital sander. Uh, papers will be between 80 grid and 180. Um, I will need some uh, tools as well to get the metal out and get it straight. So let's start. So let's begin. Um, first of all, before you start working with the material here, you need to make sure it is totally clean. Uh, and that involves both cleaning up with water and soap and of course some thinner or grease remover. This has already been done on those parts, so that's just ready to go. The second part is that I will make sure to go over the parts that are dented and the parts that are with rust. So let's start just fixing this uh, shaped hole here. Because this one is really, really dented in the end. So what we need to do is first of all, try to straighten it out some. If I don't lose my horse here. This is rather thick, so we need to hit very, very hard. There is plenty of rust in this end here, but we're not going to do anything with it. We're just going to flatten it out and make the rust disappear by grinding it away. And then we will just add some um, filler into it. The most ideal would be to use some heat. But I don't have any heat to add here. When you are happy with it, it's time to make the rust disappear. You can either use a tool like this one or my big grinder. Let's see. We have not got it uh, level enough. Uh, it really doesn't matter that much because this is a tractor machine and we are going to fill some just some normal putty and uh, into it instead. Same 
here, as you can see, there is rust around it, so that needs to be removed as well. again when you're underneath. So this is the first step. Uh, some people would like to add some uh, uh, epoxy primer on this before they actually put on the, the putty itself. But I will not do that. So let's mix up some putty and add it on this. So before you actually make this happen here, you need to make sure that you have a good surface to adhere to against. So I'm using 120 paper in this case. And of course I cut my finger. Should use gloves to do this. Uh, when you're mixing this, make sure you mix it really, really good. Otherwise, it will not work out. Uh, the, the color needs to be really, really even because if it's not even, then it's not mixed good enough. When it's mixed and you're happy with the color, it's time to apply it. What you need to do is apply it slowly, not too fast because you will get air bubbles inside of it. And you don't want to get too much air bubbles. Um, this kind of putty I'm using here is very very soft. That means it's easy to apply but at the same time it's totally impossible to add mu too much of it because it will just float away. At the same time, this is really easy to, to sand. So I'm just going to add enough around this hole to make sure that we have it evenly spread. Something like that. The thing is, you don't want to add too much either because if you do that, it will only create more work for you to sand. So, of course I added something else. Uh, when that's done, we just let it dry or harder. And then you go over and sand this with, I would say this one I'm using here, you should sand with 120. When you are working with stuff like this, always make sure to have something to do in between. You are waiting for the, uh, it to harden. So I'm going to start with this piece here. As you can see here, they have painted this part. Uh, unfortunately, they painted it on rust. If you have surface rust like this one, the paint will not stick and it will loosen again. The thing is, paint is not... Um, the water will get through the paint if it's not thick enough. And this paint that they put down here, they didn't put down enough paint. They don't even have a ground coat or a filler or a poster primer or anything like that. So, idiots. I only say idiots. So what you need to do is sand all this paint away, almost all the paint at least. Uh, at least in the areas that you can see it have started to bubble up. Those are the most critical ones. I'm using 80 paper, 80 grid paper in this case. <laughs> Any rust underneath, like here, you need to make sure you get rid of it. If you don't get rid of that, your paint will not stick and you will get bubbles in the future. So it's so important. <laughs> There is at least 
least I will say two to three hours of just grinding down the paint on this part. So that I will do on the camera. And when this piece is centered down, this is the end result. As you can see, rather big surface that I have to surf the, um, take down to bare metal. So what's going to do here is apply epoxy primer first and then go over almost directly after with filler. When you have a spot like this, it's always important when you do sand, you sand with a flat block. Uh, for instance, you can be using a block like this one and you sand crisscross across every time. Otherwise, this will end up, if you're sanding with hand, um, this part here is often a little bit softer than the paint. That means you will dig down into this instead. So it's really, really important that you always crisscross like this. Uh, when doing a first sanding on a coat like this, I recommend to use like 80 to 120. It depends a little bit about the end finish as well. Uh, since this is a tractor part, I will not be using a block at all. Uh, I will be using uh, my orbital sander instead. <coughs> What's important is that you always move around in different directions and make sure that you don't sand too much. <coughs> I always start in the edges and take down also uh, the high spots. <coughs> In my case, I'm using a that is worn out. Let's change this to something else instead. In this case, I'm not out after getting it 100% smooth because that doesn't matter. This whole hood is actually a lot of bumps inside. So so you don't lean it on the edge because if you do that you will dig down as well. If you are pressing hard then you are doing it wrong. Then you need to change the paper uh, instead because you should not, you should never be pressing this tool really really hard. Always feel with your hands, your bare hands you will easily be feel uh, your hand is so sensitive you easily feel the bumps and all the grooves here I have one for instance and I have one little there as well I will not do it <coughs> like that uh, I'm going to take this edge a little bit not the correct tool to be using here so uh, you should have something else like that and I'm happy uh, this is it for the episode one of creating or restoring the parts for the John Deere uh, hopefully you do follow me and understand some of what I do uh, off camera I will know continue with the rest of the uh, stuff here um, the next part will be about taking care of the pieces that are of plastic like this part here in the front and also this part here uh, so until then thank you for your time please subscribe uh, like and comment if you want and we'll see you next time